opening performance you just enjoyed. Um, and it's a, it is an excerpt from Torched and Wrecked by David Skidmore with the Grammy award-winning ensemble Third Coast Percussion was performed by students in the 2019 spring concert. Tonight's program represents the kinds of faculty research that you make possible at VCU Arts. As a member of the Pollock Society, excuse me, your gift supports our faculty grant program, which provides funding for all stages of research, from initial exploration to the creation and presentation of new work. Justin received one of our exploratory research grants in 2018 to explore how immersion in non-Western musical traditions could inform both his performance and teaching practices. Justin's research reflects his cross-genre approach to his own performances and recordings. He has collaborated with an eclectic range of musicians and ensembles from Stephen Vitello, a, a sound artist and our chair of kinetic imaging, to the Richmond Symphony. Justin is also a dedicated chamber musician and co-founder of ARC Duo with flutist Tabitha Easley, who is also a member of our music faculty and his research collaborator. Their duo has performed throughout the world. In this evening's presentation, Justin will explain how his research allowed him to expand his curriculum, embrace new practices, and refine his technique as a percussionist. You'll have an opportunity to hear examples of the wide variety of music and instruments he integrates in his classroom. And percussion students Tyler Green and Rebecca Daleside will join Justin for the question and answer period following the recorded program. So please feel free to submit your questions at any time by using the Q&A function. I really hope you enjoy tonight's program. And as always, I thank you for your continued support of VCU Arts and the creative work of our faculty. Good evening. My name is Justin Alexander, and I am an assistant professor in the Department of Music here at VCU, where I teach percussion. I'm so excited to talk to you this evening about the ways we are incorporating non-Western musical traditions into the percussion area and the Department of Music, and to show you how the Pollock Society's support enables us to offer these experiences to our students. I'll be sharing a series of videos throughout this presentation that showcase the exciting, diverse musical experiences of our students and how the support at VCU has enabled us to expand our ensemble offerings beyond the traditional conservatory model that a student would encounter in many other musical programs. I'll be focusing on three areas of pedagogy. The applied lessons, where students study one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. Our robust series of guest artists, where students experience master musicians in an up-close and intimate setting. And our ensemble offerings, where students can spend a semester practicing and performing non-Western music in traditional ensembles for credit. These three areas work symbiotically to strengthen students' development and growth as well-rounded 21st century musicians. I think about my studio as equipping future educators, performers, and professionals with the tools to not only display technical mastery of their instruments, but to also be creative and curious musicians who can develop their own unique voice. The first video showcases a short series of compositions from a book titled Rudimental, Pieces for Snare Drum Inspired by the Tabla Drumming of North India. I helped edit this book, which was written by one of my teachers, Sean Medvedsky, who teaches at McGill University in Canada. Sean has devoted his life to the study and performance of North Indian Tabla. I chose to start with this video because it perfectly encapsulates the type of pedagogy that excites me and that I hope to expand on in the coming years. That is, using non-Western musical traditions to explore new ways of thinking about, performing, creating, and teaching music in higher education. A typical tabla solo has a beginning section, middle section, and ending section, and can last up to an hour. What you're about to see is not that. This performance is a series of tukras, or ending compositions. Tukras are unique in the tabla solo and that you have to recite them before you play them. You'll see my student, sophomore Tyler Green, reciting the bowls or syllables for each composition while keeping time using his hands in the Hindustani manner. 
When it comes time to play each tukra, Tyler will pick up his sticks to play the snare drum, and you'll see me join him on tabla. I hope you enjoy uh, the tukra collection number one from Sean Menevetsky's Rudimental. Thank you. 
piece you just saw, Tyler is playing a traditional tabla solo from North India. He is learning the building blocks, rhythms, and compositional elements of this music and applying those ideas to an instrument he already knows and is familiar with, the snare drum. Through this process, Tyler not only increases his technical and musical facility on the snare drum, but he also gains real insight into the Hindustani music system, including performance practice, improvisation structures, and important traditional compositions. After working through the book, Tyler will be able to construct his own solo for snare drum that utilizes the language of tabla. It's this kind of cross-cultural connection that inspires me and my students to continually engage our creativity and find new ways to approach music making every day. The applied lesson is the perfect place to begin introducing these concepts to the students. By highlighting and programming repertoire that foregrounds non-Western music that is playable on Western instruments, students begin learning from day one that there are exciting different ways to approach our craft. Tyler's work on Rudimental is one example of this, as Tyler and I have been working through the book in our lessons this year. I want to show you another short clip of a student at BCU, Rebecca Daleside, who is doing similar work but on another popular percussion instrument, the marimba. In this clip, Becca is performing a piece called Night Song, which is a traditional piece from Ghana performed on the African Jeel, which is a 14-keyed marimba. The arrangement she is performing was completed by Valerie Naranjo, a New York-based percussionist who has spent much of her life and energy studying the jeel in Ghana. Valerie's transcriptions again allow students to explore non-Western music on their own instrument and to develop the skills needed to perform this music. In this case, the ability to improvise with the right hand over a repeated bass line played with the left hand. Here is Night Song. In addition to applied lessons with me, students also have the opportunity to study Afro-Cuban percussion with our fantastic adjunct instructor, Hector Coco Perez. Hector is a Grammy-winning world-class percussionist and a master drummer who specializes in Afro-Cuban and Afro-Puerto Rican music. He has extensive knowledge of hand drumming and has toured the world as a professional percussionist. 
Percussion students at VCU can study with Hector for multiple semesters, developing their skills on congas, bongos, and timbales with a true practitioner of the art. In this short clip, you'll see two students working with Hector, who is off screen, on bata, a drumming style originating in Nigeria and used for secular and sacred purposes in Cuba and Puerto Rico. The interlocking and shifting rhythms give students a chance to work on their strokes and sounds while also playing together like chamber musicians. We've been fortunate to have support in bringing in several guest artists who are masters of music found around the globe. Our next clip highlights a few of the performances of these artists, starting with Rohan Krishnamurthy and Flute Raman, two top-tier South Indian Carnatic musicians. Next, you'll see Patience Munjeri, one of the few women to perform on the Mbira professionally in Zimbabwean Shona culture. Patience was at VCU for four days in October 2019, giving master classes, lessons, and concerts at both VCU and the University of Richmond. Last, you'll see percussionists Efrain Martinez, Ama Rios, and Hector Barres working with students on traditional Puerto Rican bomba music and rhythms. Bomba, whose origins are rooted in Puerto Rico's history of African slavery, was used as a rebellion tool against slave owners. Today, bomba is practiced as a communal activity throughout Puerto Rico. We were so fortunate to host these artists in person at VCU, allowing them to work closely with our students in both applied lessons and master classes, and performing traditional concerts for the community. This kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction with master musicians is an incredible experience for our students and highlights the virtuosity of diverse musicians and their musical traditions. Third, our ensemble offerings have expanded to give students the chance to engage with non-Western music throughout the semester in a performance context. Through Richmond's wonderful cultural diversity and some truly serendipitous circumstances, we are fortunate to have both Japanese taiko and Indonesian gamelan ensembles here on campus. 
Our last clip showcases two brief performances by the VCU Tycho and VCU Gamelon ensembles. All of this adds up to a curriculum for our students that diversifies their musical experiences and rethinks the role and training of percussionists in the 21st century. I truly believe that stylistic versatility and knowledge is paramount for the contemporary musician. The cross-cultural knowledge, the performing and improvisatory practices, and the connections students make between their own musical home and the music of the world will continue to set them up for success in their lives and careers after VCU. I'm grateful to VCU and the Pollock Society for supporting this work, and I look forward to building on it in the future. Thank you. Hi. Welcome Hi. back. <laughs> that you. was wonderful. It was lovely. I wanted more. <laughs> um, Tyler and Rebecca, if you would like to join us now. Um, hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Kelly Kerr, I'm Director of Events here at VCU Arts, and it's my great pleasure to be part of the program tonight and help direct your questions in the Q&A. And, and we have two of our students here, um, Tyler and Rebecca, if you'd like to introduce yourselves and just share what you're studying and, um, you know, briefly, um, Tell us about your experience um, in this percussion program. Um, I'll go first. My name is Rebecca Daleside. I'm a sophomore music and psychology student here at VCU. Um, and I personally really enjoy the aspects of melodic percussion, which is probably why my marimba piece was shared. Um, but seeing, looking back on all of those old master class videos, I feel like those experiences definitely meant a lot more to me than I realized in the moment and being able to experience all of these different diverse like categories of music, especially now that I'm learning about them again in world music styles with Dr. Easley, it's really awesome to be able to say, hey, I've met these people, I've seen them live. And it's it's truly a wonderful like eye-opening experience to see music that, it's not that it's groundbreaking it's not groundbreaking because it's been it's established as traditional but it's different from what we would study at a more traditional western music university it's really awesome that we get these kinds of opportunities nicely said becca but um i'm tyler i'm tyler green i'm a sophomore music performance major at vcu um all in all uh my experience here at vcu has been nothing short of amazing it's been definitely challenging but um i wouldn't want it to be any other way dr x is a very great professor he knows his students very well he knows how to push us all you know toward our limits but he knows how to you know understand us from a student perspective so i really do um thank him for um the type of teacher the type of peer that he is colleague and um also um just to kind of talk about the studio, our studio, we have a very tight core um, knit of friends, you know, that it's just like a family. Um, we have different opportunities to uh, experience different cultures of music, different types, uh, to be able to travel, play, get our voices and get our own, you know, sound out there. So um, PCU, the percussion studio, I feel like it's kind of something small that people don't necessarily think of when they think of VCU arts. 
but it's definitely one of the best parts of the VCU um, music program. So. Excellent. Well, well, they're going to know a little bit more about it after tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Justin, um, can you uh, share with us a little bit about your personal journey through percussion and how you landed in this, this field, um, you know, as a professor here at, at VCU Arts, the school, the Department of Music? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to. So I think I had probably um, what you would what you would consider maybe a, a sort of a, a very typical uh, introduction into uh, percussion and music, and that was through the drum set. My uh, when I was growing up in Arkansas, my neighbor um, who I who I played with um, as a, as a child, his father had a drum set in his garage, and one day I wandered over there and started playing around, and his father came out and showed me a few beats to play on drum set, and I immediately went home and got cups and pots and pans and all the things out of the kitchen and started playing. And I was about seven around that time. And um, I think my parents thought it was a fad for a while, but I didn't really stop. Um, and when I was about 10 or 11, they bought me my first drum set and got me some lessons. And so I really started in, on an area or on an instrument that you wouldn't, most people probably wouldn't associate with someone who eventually becomes uh, a music professor who specializes sort of in classical Western music. But I'm proud of my drum set, how I started, and I'm proud of uh, the, the skills that I learned on drum set that I didn't realize until much later in my career how valuable and useful those were. And those skills uh, are what I see in a lot of the music that we're studying in the, in the percussion studio. A lot of non-Western music utilizes skills like learning something by ear learning how to improvise, learning how to construct a groove and maintain a groove without any sheet music in front of you. Those are things that I was doing in high school, in junior high on drum set that have been incredibly valuable to me as a musician in lots and lots and lots of different genres that I've played in. So uh, after I started on drum set, I joined band and orchestra in school, went through school, uh, went through college and decided uh, pretty early on in college that I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, I had a really, really fantastic undergraduate professor in Blake Tyson at the University of Central Arkansas, who really showed me that um, I could do, I could do this. I could do really do what I wanted to. Um, and that I wasn't, uh, that I had the skills and the abilities to do this. And he believed in me in, um, in a lot of ways when I didn't believe in myself. And that made an impact on me uh, in many ways. And that's the sort of uh, impact I hope to have on my students. So I knew very early on that I wanted to be a teacher and the requisite sort of path for that was to go to graduate school and then get a doctorate and then uh, apply for about 150 jobs it seems like until we finally land one. Uh, and I was very fortunate in 2013 to come here to VCU. I'd been teaching sort of as an adjunct in Alabama and I started here in 2013 as a visiting assistant professor and then uh, fortunately in 2015, I was hired uh, as the professor of percussion and I've been here ever since. And when I started at VCU, I thought that I would be running, well, maybe a better way to say this is that if you would have asked me seven years ago when I started at VCU, if I would be doing this much non-Western music in my curriculum, I would have said, no way, it wasn't on my radar at all. But as I got sort of interested in this, and as I started to see how important some of these skills are that these musics develop that aren't, that we're really not teaching in a lot of our other classes, um, it seemed like a no brainer to me to start to include this music, start to include the development of these skills and to create something that is maybe just a little bit different than, um, than programs at other universities around the state and around the country. Um, and now that I've sort of taken the deep dive into this world, it's, uh, it's really fascinating and I can't really imagine um, going back to not doing it at this point. So I think it's gonna become a, a big part of my teaching, my pedagogy, my performing and my research uh, from this point on. Excellent, I see Tyler and Rebecca, you're both nodding. So you, you seem to really enjoy this. We have a question here that 
that either of you, um, our students can answer, um, how has this incredible and diverse experience changed your perspectives on um, what you will pursue in your career and your music journey? Um, for me personally, um, I think um, first coming into it and um, coming into the semester, Dr. X did um, inform us that we were going to start doing some different um, types of uh, drumming, Western drumming, um, but also um, Indian drumming. So that was something that, of course, caught my eye. I like I'm a type of person that likes to do different things and have a sort of an understanding of different cultures and how they perceive music, just so I can be literate myself and understand it from their perspective as well. So um, that was something that I automatically fell in love with this semester. I was like, okay, this is about to be a cool semester. I get to do something new. I haven't done this before. So um, getting into it, um, it has really opened my mind just to understand that we think of music in such a linear way sometimes. And a lot of the ways that we can get outside of that box are literally right in front of us with our hands, just doing different things with our mouth. And um, it's a challenge, of course, but once we take that challenge on and we work it out and we try to understand it, it actually does give us, gives me a catalyst to, you know, be better at different things. It gives me um, more of a better understanding of not just the music that I'm playing, but how I can apply that to other parts of percussion, other parts of my school um, activities and just other parts of life, so. Excellent. Rebecca, what, what are you thinking? Um, so my path is a little bit more different. I've become really interested in the way music interacts with our brains and our bodies. And I'm actually intending on going to grad school to pursue that sort of research. And we all know that we listen to certain types of music and we feel some type of way, like you'll throw on some rap and boom, it's a party or you'll hear some kind of slower classical music and you'll feel sleepy, but it's a lot more complex than that because like your brains fire at certain different types of things and actually listening to this right now makes me think like maybe different cultures like music it interacts with their brain differently like for example gamelan um it's a very sacred music to them it's very holy and maybe it makes their brain react differently and so it holds a different place in their hearts and makes their bodies feel differently so I would really love to explore more about that in the future. That's so interesting. I think we need to give you a research grant. <laughs> um, we do have another question here. Um, Justin, perhaps you could share some information. Um, are there any semester abroad programs in world music? And you're, yeah, here you <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, there are many uh, study abroad opportunities uh, using utilizing non-Western music uh, and percussion specifically. The first one that comes to mind and one that I actually looked into um, in 2016 or 17 is there's the Dagara Music Center in Ghana where, um, and this is a music center that uh, focuses primarily on, on West African Ghanaian drumming and they host groups from the U.S. all the time, year round. I mean, that's literally uh, what they do. Um, it's a village that was uh, run by a master musician named Bernard Wilma that specialized in, in the jeel, the African xylophone, um, that you heard Becca play a piece that was uh, arranged from that instrument to our uh, modern concert room. And I've had a lot of colleagues across the country who have taken their students there for four to six weeks in the summer and just had sort of an immersive experience um, at that music center with that type of music. That's probably the, the, the one that's the most established as far as I, um, as far as I know right now. Um, I am very interested since we have Hector uh, Perez here with us, um, not tonight, but at VCU, um, of establishing a relationship with uh, the University um, of San Juan, Puerto Rico, where hopefully we will be able to take some students to Puerto Rico to learn traditional bomba music with, at the conservatory there, which has a program in bomba, 
but also with Hector, since we have that connection uh, here at VCU. Um, so that's something that I'm hoping that we can get up and running in the next uh, couple of years. Uh, but there are lots of uh, study abroad opportunities with this music. Um, a couple other really quickly. Um, I've had colleagues who have taken students in Zimbabwe to learn um, Imbira as well. And I've had a colleague that took his studio to India uh, as well, which seems like uh, a big undertaking. But he took his students to India and they stayed there for about a month to study and listen to traditional um, Indian classical music. So lots of opportunities, and I'm excited to explore them. Excellent. Um, so there's a question that stemmed out of what you were speaking about, Tyler, um, about how your experience in this percussion class has um, maybe impacted um, and affected the way that some of your other um, work here at VCU Arts is unfolding. and. Can, can you maybe share how, that, that's really fascinating, how your percussion work is impacting and maybe enhancing some of your other studies? For sure, um, just to uh, kind of do a quick overview on that. Um, like for right now, we're doing a, a project with Dr. X and um, his wife at U of R called Monumental for Change. It's, um, it's pretty much we're taking, uh, the coordinates of different places and we're mathematically figuring out chords that go along with it we have a rubric to help us do that but it's just like it's um more solo hands-on project and it's kind of giving us the step to uh start um doing our own type of uh, music production so getting into music production um learning this these different type of um, western um african and um, indian songs uh beats patterns, it has helped me um, for myself as a musician, not just with the things that I am doing for uh, my percussion requirements, but things outside of that for um, my different um, solo musician um, careers. Uh, it's given me a way that now I can, I feel as if I can kind of revolutionize a music scene for percussion and now, you know, incorporate different percussion more heavily into modern day music. Uh, I think that's something that a lot of musicians uh, have an understanding of is percussion, but a lot of them don't tend to put it into music and make it kind of stand out in a way where people can say, oh, that person must have been a percussion or where did this come from? Where'd you understand this? How did that, you know, pop in your head? And that has um, opened my eyes and it has really given me uh, a goal and um, something that I really want to work towards so I can kind of do something new, you know what I'm saying? So um, that's the ways that it has really helped me and changed my perspective on the way I want to go um, musically throughout my career. Wonderful, how about, how about you, Rebecca? Do you have um, examples of how maybe this has affected your studies? Um, yeah, even in like theory classes where we have to do arrangements or create piano accompaniments to melodies, it's really helped me expand and diversify my own like rhythmic like compositions. Like for example, we're supposed to just do like chords in the left hand and then like a simple rhythm in the right hand. Like last year I would just do like up and down triplets, arpeggios, steps kind of stuff. But now I have a different viewpoint like more things I can do rhythmically with projects and try to throw some polyrhythms in there just to be annoying or just make it a little bit more exciting and think of it as um, a chance to flex my creative muscle instead of just getting the assignment done and turning in the project. Nice. Um, let's see Justin this is a question I think for you. Um, are there digital applications for this work or ways that this could be taught on a larger scale, perhaps virtually? Well, I would say, first of all, we're still doing our applied lessons virtually right now. So the, what the students are working on is happening uh, virtually, but that is that is one on one. Um, in terms of a larger application for this, uh, certainly, there are um, there are ways to expand this sort of training outside of the world of percussion. 
So one thing that I think could be incredibly valuable about uh, utilizing non-Western music um, in, in the music conservatory, and this is something that has been done before, it's not necessarily original to me, but there are ways to expand on it, is to, is to have this sort of, uh, we'll take the, the Indian tabla rhythm, uh, have that be a basic part of the musicianship's course that every music student goes through so that if you play any instrument, you have to learn a little bit about the Indian rhythmic system because it is so much more advanced than our Western rhythmic system. The Western uh, hemisphere of music, uh, European art music, whatever you want to call it, excels uh, a lot at harmony. That's, that's our thing. We have taken harmony and, and expanded it and really um, that, is, that is our bread and butter. Rhythmically, Compared to a lot of other cultures, we are we are still children, and so I think incorporating the best from around the globe of what each music has to offer, uh, whether that's rhythm, whether that's melody, whether that's texture, harmony, whatever it is, so that students learn, even non-percussionists learn. Here's how the Indian rhythmic system works, and here's how I can apply it to my Beethoven string quartet or whatever it is that they're playing. That's how I see it being expanded. Um, really transformative uh, in a way uh, to music education in, in higher ed and in uh, secondary schools. Thank you. Um, so dovetailing on that thought, um, Tyler and Rebecca, can you share maybe what this virtual experience has been for you? I mean, there. I'm sure we all want to know as students, this is a whole new world, but it, it seems like there may be some opportunities that have arisen and maybe you can um, share some of the silver linings with us. Um. Well, in the beginning, when it first started and everything shut down, it felt like a slap in the face to any art program. But as we figured out, they figured things out and adjusted. The first silver lining musically I felt I really found was the change in our jury assignments in which we, um, Dr. X assigned us to compose a snare piece and to compose a piece out of found objects around our house. And this was daunting for me because I had never really written anything with me before. But my snare piece, I ended up taking the time from my phone number and creating variations on that. And then my found objects piece, I'm a big reader. So I just pulled books off the shelf and hit it with stuff. And I was like, oh, cool, this is a good sound. And ended up writing something that I was really proud of. So random opportunities like that and the monumental change piece um, just things like that to get out of our comfort zone to what we would would have been would not have been doing had we been in person. It's really amazing, honestly. Um, to kind of piggyback off of what um, Becca was saying, um, with the online thing, it was definitely a, an adjustment at first. Um, just especially for percussion, I could say, I know for all art programs as well, but for percussion, we don't have the luxury to take home a, a marimba. That's usually $5,000. A lot of the instruments are bigger than what space, the spaces that we do have in our, either our dorms, apartments. So it's kind of hard to get access to those things with the COVID restrictions. So that was kind of at first a little bit of a challenge and a little bit worrisome, but we figured out different ways to navigate through that, which is awesome. Um, ways that I have uh, definitely took this online um, step and made it um, the best it could be uh, have definitely come from Dr. X. Um, at first coming in uh, as a freshman, uh, doing lessons and doing everything in person was awesome, but I was new to more of, you know, a lot of the curriculum and the style of teaching um, when it um, came to more of the um, individualistic and one-on-one -on -one, um, lessons. So um, I can say for myself, and I could probably say for the studio, when you first go into Dr. X's um, office and you have your first lesson and he turns the camera on, it kind of gives you a sense of, whew, like this is a movie or something. So um, that was kind of hard to work through at first. Um, 
understanding it as a freshman too, uh, you would get a lot of the comments from the older uh, seniors, juniors in the studios, like, don't be scared. He wants your best interest. He's not doing it to scare you. But it, at, you know, when you're starting out, it's a little bit hard to understand that. But um, now with um, the online, he's having us send in our uh, lesson materials a day prior to our lesson. So first of all, that's helping us now practice in ways where we can now self um, analyze, self critique, because we're forced to do that. And that's something that as a percussionist specifically is your best friend. It's always something that we neglect to do because it's uncomfortable at first to look at yourself and pick out the things that you know you need to work on, but you feel like you don't know the answers because you're a student. But um, being able to now get into the groove of that and understand the way that it's um, challenging us has been nothing but um, stellar. It is, I've definitely seen the growth in myself and a lot of my peers and how that has helped. So I think that's my biggest takeaway from COVID and um, the online shift. Thank you. Justin, um, we're all gonna be so thrilled when we can be back in person and we can like feel the vibrations and be in the same space and, so as, as, a, as an educator, what, what do you see um, being this benefit as your students are back in the studios, are all working together? Do you see like wings or what, what is your thought when we will all be back in these spaces working freely? Uh, so I would say um, a couple of things. Uh, First, there are many things that we have done due to COVID that I think we will keep even when we're back in person. For one, what Becca and Tyler have been sort of elaborating on is with percussionists, especially um, our instruments are not particularly portable and there's a lot of them that, that we have to play, a lot of different instruments and many of them are very big. Uh, it's not the same as uh, maybe uh, playing a guitar or playing a trumpet or something that you, you have with you, you can carry, you can move it back and forth. So one thing that, that COVID has forced us to do, uh, especially in the, a year ago when this first hit and we, we sort of shut down the university, the students didn't have access to the instruments in the building for a while. And so we really tried to explore. And one of the things that I'm, again, trying to tie in with this non-Western non curriculum is learning to explore more of our own creative voice so that we're not just interpreting music that's already been written or playing music that's on a page in front of us, but that we're learning how to create as well. That is something that I'm not going to uh, go back on once we're back in person. That will be a part of the curriculum from here on out because I think it is uh, incredibly valuable uh, for the students and for me. And it gives us a breath of fresh air and allows us to really express our own interests and our own voice uh, musically. That being said, we had our first percussion ensemble rehearsal uh, on March 9th, last Tuesday, when we finally opened up. And I was so excited and ready for it, but I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for the level of excitement that the students had to be in a room together again, playing music. I mean, I just have to say it, it's it just it it can't be done over Zoom. It really can't. And that experience is so crucial and so vital to being a musician, whether you're gonna be an educator or a performer or just a professional um, in the world. That experience of playing with others in real time um, in the same room is incredibly valuable. And we're so excited to get back to it. Um, and so I know the students are 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 just aching for it in many ways. So there's lessons that we're gonna learn uh, from COVID that I think we're gonna take with us, but we're all certainly excited um, at the prospect of getting back together and performing for audiences, performing for ourselves, um, and really making some, uh, some good music together. Well, I know we'll be filling houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we're looking forward to inviting all of our Pollock Society supporters and friends. And um, so it will be lovely to meet all of you in person. Um, we have just Absolutely. a few more minutes. Um, and I have a question here. It's a little bit of a story. Um, 
Rebecca, I think you triggered some memories. Um, one of our guests um, was staying in a trailer, trailer Airbnb on a cliff in Los Angeles. This sounds fascinating. It was Christmas time and there was a party nearby. There was a mariachi band playing, which was beautiful. Um, and this guest thought it was going to end, but after the mari mariachi music stopped, a big booming drum played. It felt like vibrations had reset their pulse. It was really interesting <laughs> um, and a very interesting way to fall asleep. So the question, Rebecca, is do you study how music may change um, the physical nature of things? Like you had kind of mentioned that before. Yeah, the phys physiological aspect. Um, it's definitely on my list of things to look into because music does so many things for the body. Um, touching specifically on like the booming drum, like lulling you to sleep. There are definitely studies out there on how like different pitches or tones of sound can calm or awaken your brain. So deep, lower sounds do tend to calm down the body, whereas like a high pitched piccolo is not going to put anyone to sleep. So there is definitely research out there on that. Um, but it's definitely on my list to look into stuff like that. And I have seen um, sources somewhere, I don't remember where, saying how like drummers can tune into the natural rhythm of the world. I don't know how scientifically accurate that is, but that stuck with me ever since I read it. And I think or like the natural rhythm of like your own body, like your pulse, your neurons firing your blood flow. And like, I feel like for me anyways, that's all I really care about portraying when I perform. Like, yes, the articulation is important, but if I can portray how I feel when I'm playing, I feel like I've done my job. So it's physiological impacts are on my list, but I don't know too much about it right now. Well, we look forward to hearing more from you <laughs> in a few years. We'll do our own Zoom with you. Um, I so, would say too, Kelly, that if, uh, if that guest would like to uh, relive that experience, uh, they can definitely come to our first percussion ensemble concert and there will be many, many loud uh, drums that they can choose to fall to sleep to or not. Well, that sounds like our future programming. I'm going to make a mental note of that so that we can invite all of our friends and just feel those vibrations in person. Um, I see that we are just about out of time. Um, I, I want to thank all of you for being with us this evening. Rebecca, Tyler, Dr. Alexander, Dr. X. Um, it's it's really a treat to hear um, your positive experiences and, and thank you for sharing them with us. And the music was beautiful. I think we all wish we'd had bigger speakers. I know I, I do. Um, so we will um, look forward to seeing you all um, in the future, um, hopefully next semester. And um, there are a lot of complimentary um, messages here for you, Dr. X. Um, you know, you've done a great job with our students as so many of our faculty have, and we're just so proud of all of you. Um, and I would like to thank all of our attendees this evening for sharing your evening with us and um, invite you to join us next month. Um, our April 15th Pollock Society event will be around cinema and sports. Um, and so that should be a really interesting program. And, um, and goodbye for now. Um, stay safe. And thank you all so much again for joining us in the many ways that you support our students and our faculty. Um, we're truly grateful. So good night. Absolutely. Thank you very everyone. much. Thank you. Good night.